Barcelona, Spain. Okay. Um, we are live. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the How to Make Money Trading Stocks uh, webinar for uh, Friday the 13th, 2016, uh, uh, the Friday the 13th of May. Uh, joining us from uh, Zurich, Switzerland is uh, Michael Bishop. Michael, how are you doing? Hello. I'm fine. The weather is terrible. We have uh, heavy, heavy rain, so oh, maybe... Boy. Lots in some regions. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what I said. So we have a very heavy European presence today. That's a that's a great thing. I always I always love it when people join us from all over the world. So let's get going here. I am recording. I want to remind everybody that all the materials we present are for training purposes only. Traders should only paper tra should paper trade any new method prior to the risk of personal capital. I mean that sincerely. I, I'm I'm. Uh, working with somebody right now who just refuses to paper trade, and uh, and and it just it's frustrating a little bit. But here's Michael's disclaimer for the European market. I'll let you uh, re read that really quickly. No, um, you can check that online. Then. Um, as you all know, and I always say this every week, I, basically the, the Act of 10 trader is, is, yes, it is about trading. Yes, we do try to uh, uh, put out good trades and all that kind of stuff with that, that are well managed. Uh, but, but also we pride ourselves in doing um, training webinars every Wednesday evening. The next one is coming up this May 18th. We're going to do the conclusion of using intraday charts for after hour analysis. So. We'll, get in, we'll be able to get into that so that you will be able to take a look at the intraday charts, especially the hourlies uh, and even two-hour charts, and then make wiser decisions about when and how to get into uh, trades. And so that's what we're working on there. So this week, um, as I was writing this earlier today, it was before the market took another dip to the downside. But in reality, this week has been basically the, about the buyers and sellers are stuck. Um, they, they're, they're stuck in a range between support and resistance. And uh, not a lot is happening and certainly not giving us any good triggers to go either uh, get long or get short the uh, indexes. Hopefully that will clear up next week. But next week we do have a monthly option expiration uh, next Friday. And that the expiration Friday and monthly for the monthlies tends to have a little bit of a bias to the upside that week. We'll see if uh, uh, if that in fact does work out. Um, but uh, showing that the S and P is kind of stuck between support and resistance. Uh, the Nasdaq 100 is hanging out just slightly below the uh, moving average cluster. And when we get to the charts, we'll take a look, harder look at that. And then the Russell, you know, will support hold? That was the big question I was writing up uh, as I wrote up the slide. And then the outside influence, uh, outside and earnings influence, uh, it seems like there's little motivation. Uh, I saw somebody make a comment. As a matter of fact, Michael's going to talk a little bit uh, shortly about the low level of volatility. Uh, it's like, and volatility measures fear in the market. And, and right now, based on where volatility is sitting, there's not a lot of fear in the market. Um, and again, I don't know if that's, well, oftentimes when you get to those low, low levels, low readings of the volatility, it can stay down low for a long time, but eventually uh, something will happen to tweak the market and, and cause, you know, and fear come rushing back into the market. Will that happen going into the summer months? Uh, we shall see. Michael, do you guys utilize the volatility index a lot over there in uh, Europe? Um, I do. In, in Europe, as I, I would say, not really. They're not. See, I, I think uh, invest, or I, have, I have the feeling investors in the U.S. Uh, take more care about uh, the volatility index and the options. Okay, that's interesting. Interesting ob observation. Um, uh, the market is more um, more liquid. That's a fact. Okay, and so. Um, Here's where we were last week with the stocks above their 20-day moving average. Uh, we were sitting just above the 30 level uh, as of about 11 o'clock this morning. We were sitting today, 
just above the 30 level. And in reality, um, when I took the snapshot of the market about 10:30, 11 o'clock this morning, uh, basically we had we were almost unchanged from where we were last week. That that may have altered in the last half hour to <clears throat> to uh, uh, to 30 minutes, but we'll see. Here's where we sit today. Uh, basically, we've come down and continue to push down. Uh, Mike Trager and I do use this index uh, or this indicator, but we're looking for basically when we get down below the 30 level. Uh, for you know markets are in, and the markets are well extended away from the moving averages for you know time for a little bit of a pop and as you can see we're kind of camped out right above that level right now and the markets have not really come off of their highs that much and so there's not a lot of good ways to interpret that but we do not utilize this uh, indicator to the downside but uh, what we were talking, we talked about this on Wednesday night at the training session, and basically what it's telling us is that that's you know with the Nasdaq, the the uh, S and P, which are weighted indexes, they're still being held up by some stocks that are acting strongly, such as Amazon and uh, Facebook. Uh, in the case of the S and P, or yeah, in the case of the S and P um, and the Nasdaq to some extent. Um, but then the big question is also coming, Michael, that I think is coming down the line, is what will be the effect Apple will have on the markets and the indexes if it, in fact, does get in gear to the downside in a big way? And some analysts are expecting Apple to, in fact, you know, for that to happen to Apple. Uh, so is Apple big in, uh, in Europe there, Mike? Yeah, sure. As, as especially in in the rich countries. In the rich the countries. Is, is, uh, is, is the thing. So what How what are what are the rich countries? Where which are which are the rich countries? Is that like Switzerland and Germany and England? As, yeah, yeah. As a, hmm? uh, simple simple line is every everything basically Switzerland up to the north Germany. Yeah. Uh, Denmark, Norway, Sweden. Okay, and my my wife would like to hear that since she's Danish. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Danish. I think they were the first one in Europe with negative interest rates. Ah, we don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yet, it's it could be. Uh, we'll have to wait for it. Well, it, 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 it's a sign that uh, uh, that uh, the currency is. The government think that the currency is overvoted. Okay, uh, here's the uh, we also like to do. I like to do a little bit more in depth uh, um, um, investigation into the, the same index, the MMTH, which is a combination of the uh, NYSE and uh, uh, one of the other indices that are measured on bar, by BarChart.com. And uh, that is the percentage of stocks above their 200-day moving average because. Uh, basically, the 200-day moving average for a lot of technician is if a stock is above uh, the 200-day moving average, it's considered to be in an uptrend. Uh, but if it's below it, it's considered to be in a downtrend. That's just one of the me uh, technical measurements. And what we've got here going on is we came up and we made a peak here at the end of April. But we see price action still working within this little pennant flag type of formation and the and again this measured is it as of that day but it is a monthly indicator so the May indication of course we have to wait two more weeks for the end of May to hit in to see exactly where we do finish but so far this May we've had a turn down of the percentage of stocks above their 200 day moving average it's still sitting slightly above the 50 percent level uh, and so we'll see if, if in fact, the indexes get really hammered to the downside. Expect this to fall uh, really hard also and drop this 50%. And uh, once that happens, it's, it's telling us that, that there's more stocks weighing down the market than there is stocks that are holding it up. Again, this, the kind of brownish line measures the spiders. And while this is the monthly closes, we see 
um, you know how how they're operating within this the confines of this triangle in reality the prices on the spiders as of you know you know earlier this year actually got down into this level and last year they got up into just above the 210 level which was about up here and so <clears throat> you'll see the that range in fact oh wow Thanks, Joe. Uh, Joe just uh, said the Dow, the Dow, the S and P is down 200 points. That's a heck of a lot. If it is, that's a nasty sell-off. No, no, it's not 200. I, I think I have the live chart. Uh huh. I, I don't have to. Okay. Do yeah, he meant the Dow. The Dow's down 200. What one percent S and P? Okay. And so. Um, but anyway, if you take check a weekly and or a daily chart of the uh, either S and P and or the spiders, you'll see that it, that it has been basically formulated and moving within the the range of this horizontal uh, trading range. Uh, if we in fact get a continued rollover and this breaks the bottom of this uh, sitting uh, this triangle. Then we can expect you know pretty strong support to come in at the, around that 185 to 180 level, which corresponds, of course, to the lows we had earlier this year. Uh, interesting chart. Again, I don't use this chart to plan any trades from. It just gives me a uh, kind of a a sense or a, a, of where the market could potentially go. And since we are we're up here at a resistance area, a rollover and a fall back down to, you know, below, outside below 200 would not be a surprise um, going into the June time frame. I still come back to <clears throat> what I've been talking about, that this top looking a lot like the um, um, Price action that took place back in 2008, it's not exact, it's a little bit more sloppy, but uh, what we also have is the uh, um, a lot of government intervention by the central banks around the world that are trying to prop up this market so it does not, you know, fall apart totally. So here's where we were at about 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, Dow was down slightly for the day, but it's still up for the year, 1.34, 0.69 on the S&P, and then uh, the NASDAQ down for the year, down for the year, down for the year for, for the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ composite, and the Russell. What I find very interesting is, as I was talking about, is that basically, here's where we were last week at this time, and it's very similar. You know, where we were last week on the uh, uh, indices is very close to where we were uh, are where we are currently, you know, today. Uh, we may, and again, as we, we, what's that? It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. In other words, all the work that went into last week for the up and then the down was basically no traction at all, which gets back to my, my, my earlier statement about there's just little, there's no real catalyst that's happening to drive the market one way or the other. And I think we a lot of us have been seeing that because the whipsaw of uh, you know in getting into positions and getting whipsawed out of them is you know it, it, one it's very real but then it's also just a pain in the butt to deal with um, and because you, you take the triggers and bam it, it you know it takes out your it takes out your uh, uh, your stop loss. But one of the things that we, we are doing because it is a whippy type of environment, there's two ways to approach it. One, widen your stops, therefore uh, increasing your risk exposure or tighten your stops and uh, just be ready to, to trade once it does, you know, move back the other way. So let's take a, let's take a look at the, and see what is going on. Okay, here's the S&P on a daily on the left, weekly on the right. And as we can see, on a weekly basis, we work back up to the highs from last week and then reverse down off of those highs. We can go in here now and we can basically connect a, let me make sure I got a trend line going here. And I do. So we've got a real nice, you know, pattern going on here. That is a resistance line. 
And as we can see, we are we have fallen down to the 50-day moving average. And then it also just you know got down here and touched around the 2041 level and is now basically I, it's not rebounding with a lot of vigor, but at least it did stop its its motion. And here's been what you know the, the issue with the majority of this week is one, it bounced above the eight day moving average, hit the resistance line, and then fell. But then it just fell slightly here to the uh, just below the, the eight day moving average yesterday in 20, this uh, uh, cluster of moving averages. And then today it continues to fall, fall further. And so it's a very tight little range and making it really challenging. Okay, well, do we get short? Do we get long? What what you know what's the specifics? If we can in fact get a close below the 50, and basically it breaks through this support at the 2041 level, then we're probably going to go down here and test about the you know 228 at the uh, uh, 100 day moving average and or the 200 day moving average. If we lay a fib on this, and I will lay a fib on it just so we can get an idea from the low there to the high there. Okay, the retracement thus far from the move that started back in, in uh, February of this year, we've only had a retracement back approximately to the 23.6 retracement level. If this fails, then look for uh, a retrace at least to the 38.2 or even the 50. And as you can note, that those are both close to where we had past uh, support, but that's where you're going to, um, down here at you know, the 1996 level, and again, we could find a slip, you know, if, if the larger uh, pattern does remain and we get total uh, symmetry between this move up and it breaks to move down, that, and if it moves all the way down to here, not surprising, but we're early. We're early in this uh, weakness that the market market is showing, and and um, and so we'll be watching this to see if it continues to break down. We get another trip back up here to about the eight-day moving average, or even halfway up this candle to about the 2054 level. That might be an area where we'd want to get long the inverse index ETFs in this case. Um, so kind of a, uh, an interesting synopsis. Dorothy says that, what did, you say, what did you say, Dorothy? You said that Yahoo, someone compared the market, this market, to 1956. And so if you want to go back and check the 1950, uh, uh, 1956, oh, I didn't see the rest of your comment there, Dorothy. Um, if you want to go back and check in 1956, go to the profit charts in the Thinkorswim platform, and you can go and look at the S&P and the Dow all the way back to the before the crash in the 1920s, 1929, uh, which is kind of a fun thing to do because you can go and you can look at the price action around every major top. Kind of interesting. What else do we have going on here, Michael? I think um, what was really interesting is um, that we have now sectors, more and more sectors and major stocks that fell off from the average. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so in, in other words, uh, the S&P uh, represents less and less well uh, what's really going on. Yep, exactly. And one of the other things that everybody in the world is watching this head and shoulders pattern. So I'm not going to put too much credence in it other than to say it's there. What I would prefer watching, of course, is the aspect of, okay, I we just put in a lower high. And if we take out this lower low right here, or this low right here, we will have also put into a... a uh, new lower low, it will now have, have basically voided our uptrend going up to here and set, a, uh, set us up for potentially more downtrend. So let's look at the NASDAQ quickly. Now your parts come up right after we get done with the market review, Mike. 
So it's raining in Switzerland, huh? So heavily Italy too. Just wow. uh, I always uh, look at the, the sports side, and uh, in in the Giro d'Italia, they had even uh, ace. You call it? Huh? Oh, okay. So here's what we get from the, if, if you all remember a couple of weeks ago, I took a, a line from here to here, re-extended it from these tops here down, and that's basically reflects this. And, you know, thinking if, if we, in fact, the symmetry of this overall move is to remain intact, it would mean that from here to here, are along this, about the same time frame, uh, and this starts rolling over and falling, that we should get something similar over here. And so that put us out here at, you know, hitting potentially the bottom of the channel uh, around the week of 620 or the week of 627, which is also still in keeping with our, our theory on what's going to be taking, you know, taking place to emulate the uh, top uh, uh, or the rollover of 2008. And so it looks like we are continuing to kind of track down this. Now it takes detours every once in a while, but this was a nice detour. It popped up to the this this cluster of moving averages worked out to be exceptionally strong resistance, and we get a reversal Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But we still have this level of support down here. It's about the 4284 level, and so the way one could look at this to look to play it is any type of rebound to the eight tra uh, traded to the downside if it goes above it and then breaks back down through it uh, or gets up to the 20 because now the 20 has also crossed the 50. We're almost uh, to the point where we have an 820 crossover on the weekly chart and so we'll see if we continue to pro you know process down. There is good uh, support there at about the 4280 level. That is a zone of support, you know, five points either side. NASDAQ. So, yeah, it looks like it was down, Michael, but it looks like things have kind of chilled out a little bit. It's not. Yes, and be not. Okay. Now, the, uh, the Russell is looking very good for a potential continuation to the downside. Again, it came up here, tested the, this downtrending line, uh, and the moving averages have dropped below it, came back up on a weak retest, bearish engulfing on Wednesday, and then stopped at the 200, uh, this is the, uh, bu -bu -bu. This is the 100-day moving average because the 200-day moving average is still below its 200-day moving average. So if the market does, uh, if the market does basically weaken, the Russell will be the one that, you know, will basically um, work toward, you know, should accelerate to the downside. Draw a line on weekly true true strength okay over here Dorothy showing long downtrend oh no on NDX okay I will I will do I will go back and do that and take a look at it but this is looking really good again I, I want to reiterate that if this move is going to basically emulate this move or come down to even approach the 950 level. We are very early in this, and so we want to look towards timing something over the next week or so to be able to capture some of this move to the downside. Um, we're, and this week we didn't get a whole lot. Um, and again, looking towards option expiration next week. Of course, Dorothy, you've got to be able to just type in NDX. There we go. So I think when, uh, and let me go back to the, uh, the chart that I'm looking for. There we go. Okay, there's NDX. Uh, yeah, the true strength indicator, it, it basically has, you know, topped back here uh, in uh, 2014, which kind of corresponds Two, when we were in, you know, looking at um, 
the market started putting in this rounded top type formation. And you're absolutely right. The the uh, the true strength indicator has not, you know, uh, jumped up really high. Hasn't got even close to getting back up to the 50 level. And so it, it actually just the the level of interest actually migrated and is now uh, down about here. And that's a great way to utilize your indicators where if you've noticed a level of resistance or support where things have bounced from before is draw those in because typically the true strength uh, is a plus 50 to minus 50 type of uh, oscillator. When prices start or when the, the values of the oscillator gets down into those areas or up into those areas, oftentimes a, a short-term turnaround can be uh, watched. But also, if you are not getting back up to the 50, it also can be indicative of a lack of momentum and strength within the indicator. Good catch, Dorothy. Thank you. Yeah, let's see. We finished up with the Russell, I think. So for position ourselves going into the next week, I'll just talk about the Russell really quick. Let's say the Russell just stops right here and goes slightly below um, the moving average and then rebounds. Look for any rebound back into, I'm going to draw this on here, either the moving averages and or that downtrend line now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so at this point, the buyers have, you know, we had one, two days where the buyers came in, push prices back up, and we'll see what, how, we, how we close this market out today. Will the buyers come back in and push us back up towards or above the 50? If it does not, I think that makes it more susceptible for a further drop. Where might we drop? Well, we've got support down here at the 1064 level and some support down here at the 1093 level. After that, we're looking at 1040. After that, and we'll do one last thing, Michael. We'll throw a fib on here just to see where we are with regards to this, the move from February. And it, too, has just broken through the uh, uh, 23.6. If it closes below that 23.6, it increases the probability substantially that it will visit at least the 38.2. Uh, and possibly the 50 percent. So I would I would take this information. If you're going to trade the either IWM or the TZA, which is the uh, inverse for the uh, Russell uh, ETF, and basically lay a fib on there and establish your levels of support and resistance, and then trade it from there. So. Any questions on the market? Michael, any, any observations? No, um, not at the moment. Okay. Fine. So I have your observations coming up here. Uh, just, just one study I, I, I've seen today is that if you take a longer time um, interval, yeah. then Basically, Russell, S&P, Nasdaq uh, has have a very similar uh, have very similar movements. Yes. So, uh, Michael, this is a chart you sent me. Walk us through and tell us tell us uh, it, are we looking at something that's really good or something that should give us concern? Well, I mean, I see more and more uh, titles or charts of titles that look amazing and uh, or in other words uh, are running into extremes okay and uh, and uh, I mean these are really uh, big markets I mean one market is the gold miners they really uh, took off after five years of uh, disaster you could you could say so Hard to guess, but I'd I'd rather bet on on a bounce back, and uh, and then maybe they run into really a major uptrend. Okay. 
and I mean then uh, that Exxon was a roller coaster and uh, I mean it, it's also funny to read uh, the analysts. I think first uh, the argument was uh, oil gets cheaper and cheaper so they uh, the revenues go down, then it says, well, but on the other side, uh, they have bigger margins on the, uh, how do you call this, Re refinery business? Yeah, the refinery, yeah. And uh, now I don't know what, what what's, what's the reason now, maybe just uh, go, go look something. Yeah, this is very solid interesting. Or, I mean, it's, it's just, then another I mean Facebook has been <laughs> I think I don't know have you ever seen such a pattern I mean it was it, it, 2016 it went down together with the whole market so right. basically nothing special then it had great earnings and a couple of weeks later Investors thought no, uh, they were wrong. It's it's bad earnings or whatever. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and now it's it, it's on a on an uptrend again. I think it's extremely hard to trade. Yeah, extremely hard. And <clears throat> right now, uh, the uh, I've got a lot of friends who are actually just trading uh, option type strategies on Facebook because they're going. We don't know which way it's going. All we know is right now, for the last couple of weeks, it's been stuck around 120, and so they're doing some some option strategies that take advantage of that. So it's uh, which I just kind of say, I'm 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 not going to mess with it. I mean, these are not you know you know one of the things in comparison, Mike, between Michael, between this and this. Look at the patterns that you can draw in here for yeah. Exxon, which, yeah. you know, are pretty nice, Bob. But, I mean, and then look over at that. Uh, that's not a lot of great, you know, great patterns to work off of. I mean, other than just support and resistance, and that's about what you've got on there. So what about Amazon? Is Amazon going to crash? Well, Amazon is, is flying, can you see, it? it's unbelievable, I mean, it, it was unbelievable in December, because I think in uh, in summer it was, was quite low, yeah. and then it, it, it went back in, in February, and now, huge run, but, yep. and, and then te te Tesla, uh, very different animal again, yep. they're, they're uh, if you like, then, Google uh, also I mean, on the average flat, or I don't know how you how you would summarize. Yeah, it. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you taken this is what a six month chart. And Netflix uh, totally different uh, pattern again. So if you overlay Facebook, Google, Tesla, Amazon, and Netflix, and uh, these are billion companies, I don't know, maybe they make fifty percent of of the Nasdaq. Yeah, I have no idea. Just, just, just a guess. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull that information uh, up next uh, for for next uh, session so that we can see what the rebalancing or the balancing in Nasdaq is currently. Yeah, and and totally different patterns. And so, so one way you would say Netflix are likely oversold; the other definitely overbought. Yeah, I mean, to me, what what Amazon looks like to me is that when when you go almost vertical with some of the the that that oftentimes means that you're pushing towards an exhaustion type move um, that is just you know that is just absolute yeah you know it, it, that eventually it will run out of gas and it'll fall initially back down to its initial level of support with about the same uh, steepness uh, and velocity of how it went up, and so that's just a little something you can you can tuck in tuck in your back pocket as as you know good information to know. Well, sometimes you need a little bit endurance. Eh? It can be uh, just just going up again about yeah. fifty points. Or so. Yeah, and uh, and uh, what's what's I mean that's pretty well known that uh, Apple. Had a big move down. Yeah, it br it, not, it broke it broke long term. I was surprised. Not really consolidated. Eh? It's still. 
Yeah, it still has that pressure to the downside. There's a lot of people out here in that are not happy with Apple right now. They they sense that they've lost their innovation. I mean, it's still a big company. It does a lot of sales and all that kind of stuff. But um, um, I know that they have been overtaken with the smart in the smartphone arena. Um, and um, Apple broke support at 92 so it's you know yeah to hit this 92 level it has broken this i wouldn't short it right now but apple is definitely a shorting product in you know for the future uh it's got to work its way back up into the moving averages but uh but so michael you know this is kind of xrd is worth mentioning that's the retailers right right they they got hammered they got hammered and continue to do so. I mean, so you, just just a, a thesis of 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 myself uh, that we have now one little market after the other and one one single stock after the other that almost crashed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if the market follows. Yeah, a very very interesting because I mean I'm sitting here looking at the uh, um, looking at Apple looking at Google Google's chart is as messed up as Facebook's I mean look at that comparison there they're both internet related uh, Tesla is looking very you know, looking very interesting if we break this low here at the round just below 200 on Facebook I mean get ready to plunge back down to the 160 to, to um, to even the 140 level, that was its low back in February, um, and it's been a lot of a lot of fun trading that so far this year. But um, it it basically is is definitely an interesting thing. But I, yeah, the these are the retailers here. Macy's got whacked. Target's in the process of getting whacked. Um, who else did you have? Horns, I don't know. I think they had yesterday the earnings. Just Who's that? Horns. Oh, okay. Michael Kors, K O R K O R S. Uh, down. Oh, really? Okay. So we'll take we'll take a look at some of those charts that are going to the downside. But Macy, like I said, Nordstrom's also. Joe says. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there an inverse ETF for the XRT? Uh, I don't know, Joe, whether there is or not. There may be. One of the things that. Uh, is very evident here as you can see from the last six months the XRT has been operating between 38 and 46 you can do the math that's about an eight dollar move um, one of the things that one may look at rather than trying to trade XRT although it is very liquid is to take and go to the uh, uh, the individual company that you just you know want to, want to not like like I, I, I don't want to like Target and and uh, what are some of the other ones? Abercrombie and Fitch. I, I just you know I just I don't like that company. So anyway, but I don't trade it, and I try to stay out of this. I don't I don't do retails that much other than you know Tesla is kind of a a, a retail innovative type of, but I like trading Tesla, Michael because it puts in great patterns. And it has just huge daily moves, you know, six to seven to ten dollars, and four, you know, anywhere from ten to twenty dollars on it per week. And so, being patient, it it can work really well for you. One of the things that concerns me, though, is this. This is a what do you got here? Twenty and fifty day period. That twenty is just about ready to cross under. This is look at this as being a ledge. And oftentimes are a flag, and oftentimes the flag tends to form. Here's the pole, and it tends to form about halfway down the move. And so, if you take the move from here to here, and extend it from the bottom to here to here, guess where we are? Could Tesla revisit 140 by the end of the year? We shall see. So, good observations, Michael. So is the market giving you a big green light to go buy stuff? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. I mean, okay. I, I said, 
there, there are little, I mean, for instance, uh, and, and I know a couple of guys that are doing this, I mean, as soon as a Twitter has a, still a, a huge uh, user base, uh, yeah. the management is just incapable of uh, making money out of it or, or, or making <laughs> it grow. Yeah. And, and I think as soon as there is uh, a takeover or even takeover rumors or a new kind of CIO guru takes over okay. Twitter, so it could it could uh, have a big uprun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter, um, but uh, Twitter. Well, they say that Twitter will never be able to compete with Facebook. But then some some are saying Facebook has, has seen its better days too. And and so, okay, cool, great, great report, man. I appreciate that. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time here on this particular chart, but this is the quarterly chart. Uh, other than I, I'm going to get my uh, trigger to get us a new one. Uh, but as we've been for the last several weeks and or months and or quarters, we're still under the dome. Um, price action on um, the S&P is sitting about right there currently. And so we're still operating under the dome. And I'm going to be checking the quarterly to see if this signal here is still in effect. And the essence of this chart was saying was every time this MACD crossed the downside on these quarterly charts, a sell-off eventually um, uh, took place. And so we'll see if that we'll see if that is in fact uh, see if we're still crossed here. Because when I checked earlier, we'd actually this is bent up a little bit. And uh, in talking with Mike Traeger, basically his take on it was that that was partly due to the desire of the Fed to not let the uh, Fed and the central, other central banks to not let the market fall. We'll see, we shall see. So path of least resistance. I'm really weighing in the path of least resistance. If we break... I would, I would kind of say if we break those support levels, path of least resistance will be that. Because it can go free fall for, as we saw, almost every index was sitting right at its you know, 23% retracement level. That breaks, then you got free fall for a little bit. Um, Seeing the money, just a little comment on my side, I see uh, dollar is uh, pretty strong today. Ah, so we have okay. seen this in the last weeks uh, again and again. Dollar strong, stocks down. Dollar weakens as stock uh, goes up. Okay. Well, what happened there? Okay. Uh, so yeah. So I'm looking here, um, but I I could very quickly jump to here or to here, depending on what we do at the current resistance uh, support level. Um, and so we may just be, you know, longer term, I'm talking about several months, we may be in a, a sideways move. Um, the thing that we have to recognize, though, is that the range of those moves, when you count between the two, the support and resistance levels, uh, is fairly, is very significant. Okay. This is why I'm talking about getting whips out of a trade. Got whips out of out of a trade this week, uh, but here's our results so far. Uh, no strategy two trades. Well, we have a strategy two trades on, but it has not been closed. And the strategy threes have been uh, basically where the majority of our work has been done this year, uh, which has been very good. We had a presentation on Friday night, uh, Wednesday night, excuse me, about how to set up. Because I always get this question from folks. Well, if I'm coming into strategy three right now, do you know? Am I too late? You know, because I started these the two positions and the spiders and the S and P and the uh, Tesla. I opened them back in. Um, Tesla was uh, in September 29th of last year, and then the spies I opened up on the, about the fourth of January this year, and uh, the answer to that question and. It, I just recently went through the calculations with a, a gentleman who was getting into this uh, that particular strategy, and uh, um, believe it or not, it has not ch you know the the uh, 
calculations have not changed that much on how much you need to bring in on a weekly basis uh, from what it was at the beginning of the year on the spiders. I mean, it's two or three cents different uh, depending on which 2017 leaps you buy. And so halfway through the month, we're, we're, you know, by the end of the month when I'm working, I really would love to see my equity curve back up here in the, the 16,000, uh, 15 to 16,000 range because it would, it would uh, you know, basically be pushing us back up towards the 40% gainer, um, which is our target for every year. So uh, two, two weeks through May, we'll, this is starting to tilt up. We'll see if we get a continued projection on up uh, above, you know, around 15 to 16,000 is my objective. And here is the uh, uh, strategy. We're talking about strategy three. This is the Tesla trade. Um, uh, so we've moved to where now it is, we have paid for, we have basically collected enough premium to pay for what we initially put out on the trade. So our cost basis now is a negative $6.58. Uh, we've collected, uh, in reality, as of today, we've a little bit over $10,000 since since uh, September of last year. And uh, it's kind of like doing covered calls on steroids is the best I, I could call it. Um, but I, like I said, I'm really enjoying this particular strategy. If the volatility goes up, it'll make the strategy even uh, more uh, 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 better simply because higher volatility means higher premium. Uh, to be able to collect on a weekly basis. So we're hitting about a 70% win-loss ratio, collecting about $306 per week, which equates to $1,200 bucks, uh, $1, for the month. And um, if we were to close everything out right now, we'd be sitting with a 54, uh, 50% uh, gain on the total trade. So, okay, uh, upcoming presentations, the monthly BAM in June. We're going to be doing some hands-on practice uh, with your computers and your, your, uh, um, your trading platform uh, at the uh, BAM and also for those online. Uh, training on Wednesday night, we'll always do those. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm, I may put together a special training just on strategy three. I've been getting a lot of requests to do that. That way we can get it recorded, but I'm, I'll, I'll be working on that. So just an uh, introduction to, you know, for those of you who may be new uh, to the webinar, the active trend trading is based around the five pillars of active trend trading, basically what to trade, top quality IBD stocks and our index ETFs. And we, we basically, uh, because the system, know when to enter, when to exit, what strategy we're going to use, and what to expect. I'm a firm believer that you've got to have a solid system in place before you start adding the individual strategy. Strategy one is our portfolio building. I listened to <laughs> the guys uh, on a uh, market smith and also on a new product called uh, oh, Trend Trader or no Swing Trade uh, by IBD, and they were all bemoaning the fact that they have had a challenging time with a strategy one type. Uh, trades this year, um, and that that you know basically everybody who's just trading trends uh, is is being challenged with basic options. Uh, Ten percent of the portfolio is uh, is um, dedicated to that. We've got twenty percent of the portfolio dedicated to the wealth and income generating, which is strategy three. So. Uh, we've got just two more weeks. Uh, if you want to take advantage and just learn more about. Uh, the Active Trend Trading System, I'm doing a one-month trial membership for $4.99. Gives you total access to text alerts, training videos, midweek webinars, email alerts, and total access to the website itself. You can basically find out more about this at this website or at that uh, address. And uh, But no obligations. You know, you try it for, for a month. If you like it, then, hey, we'll, uh, you know, we would love to have a you know additional members of the team. Oh, I forgot my bouncing arrows there. And the value of this is you know for what I supply on a monthly basis is well over three hundred dollars per month. That's four webinars, 
plus newsletters, plus updates uh, three to four times a week, and uh, trade tracking. So with that, Michael, I'm done for the day. Are you? I'm too. Okay, what time is it in what time is it in Switzerland right now? Well, it's late. It's 9:20. Oh yeah. boy. So, when I move to Hawaii, what time will it be in Switzerland? Uh, what's the difference between Los Angeles and and uh, during, during daylight saving time is 3 hours, but I will I will then, uh, then it's exactly 12. Okay. Hours. Yeah, but I, I will um, I will still continue to do the webinars at the same California time that we would regularly do them at. So for uh, me, it would be right now about you know, it's almost twelve thirty, so it would be about nine thirty in the morning. So, and then I'll be back on the mainland uh, first part of the last part of July and uh, for the for the August BAM meeting and uh, September BAM meeting, October BAM meeting, and also going to do a cross-country trip with my wife. We've always wanted to do that uh, for mostly the month of uh, August, but I will be writing from the road and doing my evaluations from analysis from the road driving around the United States. So let's take a look at some stocks if you're ready. Okay. Okay, Joe was saying that Apple, I know this wasn't really a request, but Apple had broken, I want to make sure I'm getting the right one here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, I was talking about Apple had broken this 90 level, or 92 level right there. Now, it's, you know, it's getting close to the 50, but we shouldn't necessarily just try to jump on this going back the other way. Um, if it does break back through this level, then look for a move back up to the 8 and or the 20, well, this is the weekly average. Uh, but same thing here is we're very, you know, pushing out towards the uh, moving envelope on the moving average envelope that corresponds with 10% uh, around the 20-day moving average. Not quite to it exactly, but we are extended fairly significantly away from this. Here was earnings fell, stopped, and and this is the ledge I talk I was talking about. When you have a ledge like this after a bearish move down, uh, that's the ledge typically uh, when a stock falls off that ledge, it's got some uh, additional good, um, I don't know if you call it good or not, but uh, uh, so, you know, some significant more downside. IBB, Let's see, you bought a put at 262. One week back. That's Gary. Uh, uh, it is the June 60. And so you, you, you bought it a week back, so you bought the 60 when it was up here. What, what was the price when it was when you bought it, Gary? Okay, 262, so you actually got it about right there. Um, I think that's the only, or at least the market I, I watched to, I think it's the only market that really did not come back yeah. in any, in any yep. sense. So what's your target on your, pro, what's your target you're going to pull the trigger on to, to exit the trade? And it's a June, so you've got... You've got about four weeks left until it expires. 245? Yeah, that's reasonable. I mean, you're almost there. Then you got to make the determination. Um, uh, you got to make the determination on uh, on because there's 247, 245. Yeah, 245 would probably be a good uh, area. You do have a little bit of support that comes in over here where past support was at 248.35. And so don't be surprised to see, a, you know, it would not be surprising to see a little bit of a bounce there. And then uh, basically I would just put a, you know, if it if I move back above the eight-day moving average, I would want to get out of that position for, for a loss. But um, 
that's you know so you can hold on to it uh, and then remember the last week before or before the uh, expiration it will uh, lose a lot of its time value and that'll happen real quick let's see du -du 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 -du. LinkedIn LinkedIn's kind of look is very interesting, Tracy, because one, while the market's fallen over, LinkedIn had already experienced its big downside down uh, uh, downward plunge after these earnings over here. And it's been in the process of building itself back up. Uh, I would draw a couple of, of trend lines on here. Are you looking to get long or are are, are looking to get short? Question mark. Okay, yeah, that that works. Um, it has a, you know, it's run into a um, level of of resistance right there at the 130 level, and it's hit that a couple of times. I just want to pop this out, uh, extend to the left. Let's take a look at the. Um, it always puzzles me when I run into some levels of, of resistance like this, I have to ask the question, why? And I'm still not seeing a good answer to that, to that question. Well, no, we do. So this was last, what was this? This is the month before. So it had stopped there before last month, which would have been... We zip back across here. And I'm not seeing it. So that's that. Okay. Let me roll this forward a little bit. One, two. Okay, these are weeklies, that's it. And so it, it basically, actually, that would have been, okay, there we go. Now I understand. That was the last week in, in um, this was the last week in, in April. Therefore, that's why that's a single month. Uh, but it is down, or, you know, that's, that's a hard support area. So if I was going to be trading this, uh, I would be looking for, Time-wise, um, I mean, it may be starting to, to, to turn itself around. There's not, you know, kind of average volumes taking place. Had okay, you know, earnings report, then it fell back against it. So it's got itself in an uptrend. And um, so I would be looking at, at just basically, if you're going to trade it to the upside, you want to take play it against, you know, one of the moving averages, the tw age or the 20 or even the 50. And then what's your expectations? Well, your expectations, you're going to run into resistance about that 135 level. But if it breaks through that level, then you, the next resist, strong resistance will be up here at the 165 level or 166 level, which is within that window that you see here. This whole area on this window acts as a level of resistance. And so... Uh, doesn't mean it's not going to push on up through it, but just recognize that there's going to be levels of resistance all the way up on this. And so that's why you want to pick it up closer to down here at, on the pullback. So you may be experiencing that now. It hasn't let go to the downside, but it could also, you know, do that because what do we have going here, Trace? We have a negative divergence between the TSI on a, on a daily TSI that is telling us that, okay, we went up and tested the, the old highs are the highs from here. This is negative divergence and and it could resolve back to the downside. So it's it's got an option to go in a couple of different ways. Five. Five is the uh, five still may set itself up into this is the one we got into that got stopped out a couple of days after we got into it. We had a nice little pop up 
looked like we were going to run up nicely, fell back down below the eight, and then stopped us out on, I want to say Wednesday. Then we get a, a yeah, it was Wednesday, um, get a, a little bit of a, a reversal candle here, but we've still got this darn TSI on a daily basis tracking down. Um, and um, at the time we were looking at this, which was the trade-off of this candle, we actually had the, the uh, TSI, which was showing some positive divergence. Did it get, did uh, uh, five get hurt because of Macy? It could have been a, uh, 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 let's see, Macy's Zim, right? It is. My, my wife loves Macy's. Yeah, we can make that exactly, Tracy, because here's the fall on Macy's after hours and so it was a, it was a, it, it does appear a lot of the re other retailers went down with Macy's uh, in sympathy to their fall wow that is really nice Macy's could continue to be a real nice short for people let's go over here um, if it works its way back up into about the yeah 3453 level uh, the moving averages come back down uh, it it might that might be a good area to get short if we're going to fall further because it looks like that's a good preparation to move to the downside. So let's see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Sears already. What's that? Zero. I don't know. Sears. Sears holding. I think that's that's also. Yeah. What's what's Sears three. holding? I forget what the uh, ticker on it is. Not S, is it? No, that's Sprint. That's Sprint. Sears used to be S a long, long time ago. Sears is holding, I want to say uh, SHLD. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, look at that. Look at that drop off. I mean, pretty significant. You know, and we're not going to chase it down here. Uh, and it has earnings coming up here. So the, the brick and mortar uh, retailers, uh, you know, stand by. This, this is not a pretty picture. So, hey, with that, guys, Michael, thank you so much for joining us and, and staying up. And um, I want to thank everybody for uh, joining us today. I'll get the recording up sometime later today. And um, uh, if you are a premium member, just... Uh, be watching for the uh, alerts on the indexes, uh, probably the inverse index ETFs, if we can get some stabilization here. So have a great weekend. We'll talk to you later. You too. Bye. God bless.